Where did she go? Seriously, where is this? Oh, Four, hey, six is what are you doing? What are you doing with a headlamp on? Uh, I'm preparing, Andrew. For what? Have you been reading the news? Things going badly in the Middle East? Is that spam? Name another time things have not been going well in the Middle East. No, it's unprecedented. Right, unprecedented. I don't know what's coming next and I just want to be ready, okay? All right. How much toilet paper do you think you use in a day? Like seven rolls? We've got two jars of whatever this is. We've got two half empty bags of quinoa. One thing of ramen. Four boxes of penne. Mashed potatoes. And tuna for all of your tuna needs. Mashed potatoes, spam, tuna, crushed tomatoes. I think we're good in here for a month. Chunk pineapple. Chunk pineapple. Make Ready it for through. what? You know. It! Doomsday never the happens. Big one. I've been reading some stuff online. I think you'd be pretty Get out of the pantry. In. Pretty interesting stuff. Your hair does look amazing. Oh, I found a very stuff. powerful blow dryer in the garage. <laughs> it hasn't been used in years. Like Ready? Are you gonna hiccup the whole time? <laughs> yes. Again. It happened again. Oh Lord. Again. A f again. Fringy, loony, Mormon adjacent doomsday predictions led to the disappearance of a teenager. A Gilbert mother coming to grips with the fact her belief that the world was ending last weekend was wrong. That's according to recorded court proceedings in Alaska where her doomsday plot came to an end. Get into even more Mormon mayhem madness. I wanted to say thanks for over a thousand subscribers now. Isn't that crazy? Or no, it's over, it's even up to. A it's Over 1,100. Yeah. How many is it? Yeah. Oh, you don't have like a number. 1,100. Yeah, thanks very much. We've been reading all your comments. Uh, I've responded to a lot of them. Keep giving us video ideas. We really appreciate it. Blaze Thibodeau went missing along with his older sister, Abby, their mother, Spring, and Spring's brother, their uncle, Brooke. In an interview with East Idaho News, Abby's husband said that she had been amassing emergency preparedness camping gear in anticipation of doomsday. All of this camping gear in spite of the fact that, according to Blaze and Abby's father, she wasn't an outdoorsy person. She wasn't someone with survivalist skills. None of them like the cold. Um, they're not outdoorsy people, so they don't have survival skills. Ben Thibodeau, Blaze's father and Spring's soon-to-be ex-husband, explained that Brooke and Spring told Blaze that they were taking him on a fun trip for his birthday. Apparently, um, he was told that, that they told Blaze he was going on an early, early birthday vacation, but obviously that would have been, he, Blaze would have figured out really quickly that that's, there is no vacation. So. Spring and Brooke both believed that Blaze was a Davidic servant who had an essential role to play in the end times. My wife, Abby, and their uncle all believe in this rapture and this doomsday scenario that's about to happen according to the beliefs they have. Blaze's role in all of this, they believe he is something called a Davidic servant. So they felt like they need to protect him and they need they needed to take him to this undisclosed location where he would receive his calling and understand his role in the second coming and the Savior's return to the earth. Joseph Smith refers to a Davidic servant that most scholars believe is Jesus Christ. But among the doomsday-obsessed Mormon crowd, the Davidic servant is also rumored to be a mortal who walks among us. Chad Daybell, for example, believed himself to be a Davidic servant. And that's just one of many connections between this case and the Daybell case. His father was extremely worried because Brooke had left behind basically a last will and testament where he was describing how he wanted his assets divided among his children. So it seemed like they thought maybe this was the end of the line for them. And as we saw in the Daybell case, when doomsday is nigh, it can have fatal consequences for the innocent. Blaze, bless his heart, is not interested in his mother's doomsday prophecies 
or in being a Davidic servant. What teen would be? Yeah. Lame, mom. God, I feel so bad for him. Blaze has never subscribed to any of this. He is not, he, he, he is in no way a supporter of anything she's ever believed. Um, he is your prototypical teenager that all he wants to do is hang out with friends and be on his phone. He's an athlete. He ha he's on the football team. He's worked so hard to, to be on that football team. They still have games left this season. There's no way that he would he would have gone along with this. So Blaze, like I said, was found safe in Alaska, and Brooke and Spring have been charged with custodial interference. Ben Thibodeau pointed to two major influences on his wife's prophetic inclinations. Julie Rowe and Avraham Gileadi. Just a quick note, I know that Julie Rowe today goes by Julie Barnett. I'm calling her Julie Rowe because that's how most people know her. Gileadi is another purveyor of doomsday drivel who claims to have insights about the end times because of his close reading of the book of Isaiah. He was excommunicated by the Mormon church in 1993. He has kept a low profile ever since. Unlike Julie Rowe, whose name you'll recognize if you followed the Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow debacle. She's an energy healer and she charges money for her energy healing services. Although she does charge hundreds of dollars for these energy healing, clearing, whatever sessions, she, lucky for us, does offer free samples on TikTok. Sort of dancing in her car where she's just like, This is something you can buy. And then people are like, hold on a second. That made me feel She's something. something. She's good. <laughs> a lot of her um, energy healing could be confused with just very terrible dancing. She does this ribbon dancing. The colors of the ribbons are supposed to do something with energy. Like Chad Daybell, Julie Rowe wrote about near-death experiences, which she believed gave her prophetic insights into the end of the world. Her prophecies involve invasions from foreign powers alongside various natural disasters. Apparently, these forces will make it necessary for people to flee into the mountains, go on basically extended camping trips. Julie Rowe was a prominent figure on A Vow, or Another Voice of Warning, which is a forum for Mormons who are actively preparing for the end of the world. It was through A Vow that she met Chad Daybell. She was posting on the forum about her near-death experience and prophetic visions she had had, and he reached out to her and said, you're speaking my language, baby, like, let's collaborate. Would you like me to publish your prophecies? in book form. And that is how today we have her book, A Greater Tomorrow, which is the first of, I believe, four books she's published about prophecies. That book, along with her energy healing practices, is what eventually got her excommunicated from the Mormon church in 2019. Oh, we're being rude? Awesome, cool, my fucking turn. Ben Thibodeau told East Idaho News that Spring was so into Julie Rowe, so invested in her prophecies, that she actually served as Julie Rowe's scribe. According to Ben Thibodeau, Spring Thibodeau became involved with Julie Rowe sometime around 2015, which was a huge year for Julie Rowe and her ultimately failed doomsday prophecies. According to personal accounts on Reddit, it seems she was predicting some kind of financial collapse in September 2015, as well as earthquakes and floods in Utah. Julie Rowe's September 2015 predictions also corresponded with an astronomical event known as a blood moon. The Daily Mail was all over it. Julie Rowe writes of the tent cities in which the righteous will live as they await the second coming. I was shown various scenes pertaining to life in the camps and elsewhere, she explains. I saw that we were camping year round, that circumstances required us to utilize both cool weather and warm weather clothing. So let me get this straight. In the future, you think there's gonna be weather. Got it, got it. Of course, none of her prophecies came true. I feel like some Julie Rowe fans might say, but she said that there would be uh, flooding and there were fatal floods in September of that year. From what I've seen, flooding is not all that uncommon in Utah. That'd be like me saying, oh, I predict some people might merge poorly on the New Jersey Turnpike tomorrow. Like, I don't need a crystal ball. But that hasn't stopped her from maintaining a following. And if you go to her website, 
Wasatch wake up, you'll see that she's still advertising retreats and charging hundreds of dollars for energy healing sessions. It's so interesting to read accounts from eight years ago on Reddit of people who were around cities in Utah where Julie Rowe had significant influence. I have a lot of accounts from people who are really angry at Julie Rowe because of the amount of money that their relatives have spent on preparedness equipment. When JJ and Tylee first went missing, she also predicted that they would be found safe and that she had had a vision where they were playing safely somewhere. Those two kids, Lori Vallow's two kids, I see them, the seven-year-old is laughing. He's having a good time. The 17-year-old is watching over him wherever they are. She's been babysitting him. They're in a safe place. It's light, it's well lit. Every scene they show me, there's lights on and it's sunny. She also spoke out in support of Chad Daybell when initially the news broke. He was involved in this missing person case. They're making a pretty compelling case about some of the accusations there. against them. Do you think it's possible that Chad and his new wife, Lori, are innocent of any foul play? That, that all these not only, not, not only is it possible, I know he is. Okay. I know Chad Daybell's heart. I know him. Only two after JJ and Tylee's bodies were discovered, she announced that he had in fact sexually assaulted her at one point. Or when I've covered previous Daybell stuff, I've thought, I've thought about covering her. And then I've thought, no, no, no. She obviously has some kind of a mental illness. It's too much to go after her. Like that's punching down. But then you see that she still has this massive following of I think it seems like thousands of people and she's been tied to more than one case of an endangered minor where it seems like you kind of have to talk about this person and the fact that she has a following and why that is. I think that in a world where Julie Rowe is running amok online, there need to be other people standing up and saying, hey, did you know that Julie Rowe has been wrong about every single prophecy she's ever made? Maybe that's something you should find. Like, even if you are someone who believes doomsday is nigh, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to believe, but just keep this in mind about this person in particular. Something that I feel like needs to be pointed out to all of these doomsday people, something I really have never understood about them, is if they're coming from a Christian context, there is a verse in Revelation, I believe, that specifically says, no man can know the day or the hour. The end of the world will come like a thief in the night. You can't know. It literally says you cannot know. And yet they're all trying to know. But why would they even need to know when? Because if it could happen any time and they're already godly enough, then they should be fine. You know, they should No, they have, to, they have to have enough canned tomatoes because uh -oh. there's going to be tribulations during the end times and only the prepared will be ready. And Mormons pride themselves on being these exceptional people who will be more prepared than the typical well, well, because dumbasses. a lot of the people in, who settled Utah were like fur trappers and stuff. You know? Yeah. They're very outdoorsy. Um, they're... <laughs> for, for the last couple hundred years, it's been that way over there. They have an outdoorsy heritage. What is the solution to people being so gullible that they find this kind of thing compelling? I don't know, but it's evidently a lot of people. It seems like it doesn't matter how many prophecies of hers don't come true. How obviously mentally ill she appears to most people who look at her TikTok. For whatever reason, a huge swath of people, and I think you see this with the QAnon conspiracies as well, who just prefer fantasies over real life. And I don't think that there's anything you can say to them on a logical level that will fix that. However, many have speculated that Julie Rowe is, allegedly, according to some, bit of a grifter. She has a 501c3 where she claims to be raising money for people who can't afford to prepare for the end of the world. There has to be something where like Federal Trade Commission or someone could get involved and say, or you have to shut down this charity because uh, it's, it's not doing what you say that it's going to do. And you're not allowed to take advantage of people like this by making them fear doomsday and making them think that they need you to dance at them in your car. I know that this gets into a lot of sticky issues around freedom of speech, freedom of religion, uh, but there's money involved. I don't know, once there's money involved, I think you've gone too far. 
I think I've gone far enough. I think I've gone right up to that line <laughs> of getting sued, <laughs> and now I'm ready to retreat back into my shell. Thanks for watching, and uh, thanks again for a thousand subscribers. That's nuts, that's wild, that's crazy. We can't stand it. Thanks for watching, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye. If I, if I would tell you to give me money, mm -hmm. Because I'm going to use the money to take care of the vampire problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I believe it, and you do. Mm -hmm. And I put in efforts. You know, I can show a couple of these steaks. i got holy water there. Mm -hmm. I've left it out by graveyards for anybody who comes along that wants to, has a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I leave it on people's windowsills. Right. That's all on the up and up. What are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>